Today we're going to go over the vSAN sizing tool. So let's get started. We're going to create a project and we're going to pick out uh, the name for this project. We're going to look at a cluster for some databases. Uh, put in the company name, the Salesforce um, ID if you have that tied to that. And then we'll add some tags in this case since this is a database consolidation project. We're going to add a tag for SQL and Oracle uh, for this project specifically. And then we're going to add a description. Um, so this is a project for database consolidation. So next up, we're going to add a workload. Now you have a generic workload, but you can also add databases. In this case, we're going to start by adding a number of Microsoft SQL clusters to this. Uh, we're going to add a total number of a hundred of these. We could change other factors like the amount of CPU or IO profile, or we could even import external data um, if that made sense. In this case, we're just going to accept the defaults. Uh, no, we could change even the RAID level or other advanced settings. Um, we're going to assume that these the CPU utilization is, is actually running pretty heavy here. And this is going to start estimating our cluster requirements. Now let's go add a second workload. We're going to add some Oracle databases. And this is again going to pre-populate. Uh, one thing we can do is we can put in the number of virtual machines. Um, and again, when we look at the profile, we could change that default so one thing I want to show at the start is while you can certainly uh, manually put in workloads, you can also import workloads. Uh, so you can import from an external data source is this option you'll find on the first workload profile you've created. Uh, if you turn this on, you'll see that you can import either from RV tools, uh, which will import specifically from a Excel um, SX. It's a spreadsheet that RV tools produces, or you can import uh, a JSON import uh, from one IQ, which is another popular pr um, profiling tool. Um, also, if you're using Live Optics Virtual Assessment, remember it actually has the ability to just directly push into vSAN Sizer and open a workflow there. Now, do note we by default are going to show terabytes. If you want to look at uh, bytes, you want to change that from the base 10 to base 2, you can do that. We can also export this report as a proposal, either as a PDF or as a PowerPoint. If you want to send this report out that's generated, you can send that by email. Now going back, we're going to add a general purpose workload to this also. Um, and one thing we can do here is, let's say we don't know how much storage per VM, but we know the aggregate, we could also put those numbers in. So in this case, I'm going to put in that I know that I need 200 um, uh, terabytes. And so that's going to divide that out. That's going to add a lot of capacity to the requirements of this cluster. Next up, we can change the resources. So in this case, the CPU is running a little hot. I'm going to upgrade the core count from 24 to 28 cores. Um, I can also add for either performance, uh, the IOPS, or for capacity, I can either choose to add by disk groups or add hosts. Um, in this case, uh, the default is disk groups. But so we've added that. Now I've gone from two disk groups to three. You see that the capacity is adjusted. We can also shift this metric so the default behavior is to add hosts. Now it looks like we need some extra uh, memory in this host so we can up the memory configuration that it's recommending. So now we've gone from 384 gigabytes per host to 512. Um, also we could just add additional nodes to this cluster. So maybe we just said, let's just add two extra nodes to have some extra growth room. Um, for that recommendation, we can do that. And if you've messed with this a lot and you want to reset it back, there's also a reset all button there. Next up, let's go up here and take a look at the quick sizer. Now this is a reverse sizing tool. Uh, in this case, we're going to pick our server vendor. We'll pick a specific ready node configuration. Let's look at small flash eights uh, we want to start with. And you could pick a specific system. We can pick the number of disk groups and the uh, per server as well as the capacity that we use. And this will help us work backwards from a specific configuration um, for an actual usable capacity. Um, we can adjust whether we use compression or dedupe only. We can change the default assumptions. And we can also add additional overhead for things, um, an operational reserve, adjust the default rate assumption. And this will give us basically an assumption of how much space uh, we could leverage um, and what the specific overheads would be based on that config. 
Now note there's also an iPhone and Android application that's available for this. So if you're sitting at lunch with a customer and you want to be able to, you know, under the table quickly run those calculations, uh, that's also available. Again, this is the vSAN Quick Sizer tool you'll find at the top. Next up, we're going to look at how to filter and screen the recommended options. Now, you could filter uh, by vendor. You can filter also by the uh, device type. So maybe we want to look for um, NVMe capacity and cache. We want the fastest you know, kind of builds. Uh, you can search for a specific vendor in here. In this case, I'm going to search for HPE. And so maybe I want to, for the recommendations, look at both DL360 uh, and DL380s. And so within the report, it would actually, if I export this, um, I can, again, I can export this as either a PDF um, or as a PowerPoint. It's going to actually incorporate those recommendations uh, for those, show what it would look like modeled uh, with either of those two different host options. And again, these reports you can send out either over PDF or PowerPoint. We can not only download them directly, but you can mail them and CC out the team um, and send that information. I just wanted to do a quick overview, just show that there is a sample configuration that is created here. So in this case, since um, it's recommending all Flash 8, we can look at what the recommendation um, is. And this is going to show the assumptions that went in, as well as what the recommendations specifically were. Project management is one last thing I want to show is that once you have a project that's been completed, uh, you can clone that project. So maybe you want to make slight variations for a secondary environment uh, or you want to update assumptions. Um, you can also reset these projects back, uh, but you can copy, you can delete. There actually is a project management capability.